All right, so here we go, folks. This is our second live show, and away we go. Out in the far away, nearby, can you hear my call? Out in the far away, nearby, I'm breaking down the wall, still you're here to stay. Out from the far away. Announcing the Duchess Sue of Far Away Nearby. Hello and welcome to episode 18 of the Far Away Nearby podcast on Pride48.com. This is Sue, the Duchess. I am here with DJ Star Sage. Hello, Duchess. How are you? Not doing too badly. And I see that we have a few people in the chat room. Did we want to say hello to those? Well, we should probably say hello to them. So it looks like we have Mr. Paul Chandler of the Shy Life podcast, Shy Yeti, in the chat room. Yes. As well as we have Mr. Poppy Snow of the Smellcast. Well, that's good. And I'm sure the others will be along shortly, as this is our only our second show, and we are early, so. It's true. It's very early on a, on a Saturday night. So they're probably busy getting ready to go out. I would, I would be. <laughs> <laughs> so, shall we go on with our agenda? Certainly. Okay, we at this time we usually do our peaks and valleys. This is where we talk about our good and bad experiences of the past week. So, DJ, how was your week? Okay, well, um, it's been a pretty good week, and uh, we've got some changes we're making around the house. And, well, the uh, microwave that we've had for a few years now seems to have been giving us grief lately. Now, this is partly due to laziness on my part because, well, some things tend to work better than others if they're kept up on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> and by that, I mean um, you're really supposed to clean things that you use regularly. <laughs> yeah. Um, come to find out, one of the hazards of not keeping your microwave clean is when you have that grease building up on it, and uh, not just on the inside of the machine, but like along the door jam. Um, that, okay. That can cause problems because just the same way that you can have a grease fire on the stove, if you have grime... That's you can built- have a grease fire on the in a microwave? Well... Are you saying... <laughs> not a grease fire, per se... <laughs> But let's just say it's sort of like leaving um, metal, like a you know a fork or a spoon in the microwave when you go to heat something up, because that grease that builds up on the door jam, it can wear down the um, the protective coating on your microwave, and eventually the uh, cooking activity that goes on inside your machine will actually wear down that protective, I guess for lack of a better term, enamel. And so when you get little bare spots on the door jam where you can actually see beneath that protective coating, yeah, it, it's as bad as putting a fork in the microwave. Well, having never done either of those things, <laughs> I've never experienced this apparently. Well, Billy tried to fix it and by fix it i mean he touched it up a while back he bought some appliance paint you know like you'd use for your stove if there was a scratch yeah and it has similar properties but we've decided after looking over our options that we're just going to go ahead and do without a microwave and you know the 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 thought is a little scary at first but really um it's it's not going to be a difficult thing because 
we don't use it that much. And it's kind of a strange <laughs> thing for me to have to say that because I always had a microwave growing up. But um, my mother-in-law gave us this wonderful kitchen appliance. And um, it's something... Oh, Sue's Rides here. Um, <laughs> she gave us this wonderful kitchen appliance shortly after Billy and I moved in together. And as she is wont to do, it was probably something she got off of a home shopping channel. But, um, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, it, it was uh, a device that had instructions. And nowadays, they don't give booklets for a lot of things. It came with a CD. And she wasn't very tech savvy at the time. So she basically gave us this big box and said that she had no way to look at the instructions and that it was ours now. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what we were given was something called a new wave oven. And it's ra- uh, really a rather uh, interesting device because it basically looks like a cake box, you know, like you'd bring a cake to a party in. Uh-huh. And it has the equivalent of a hair dryer in the top of it, but it's really actually something that cooks it's not just a a little blow dryer in the top it's basically a convection oven and oh wow and it has a little you know timer thingy in the top i feel like i'm doing a late night infomercial yeah (laughs) (laughs) but um it, it does everything that a microwave can and it has similar properties to uh what a lot of ovens have so um you know whereas you're used to sticking something in the microwave for just a couple of minutes to make eggs or whatever. You could do that yeah. all in this thing. It's just you have to use a different, you know, maybe a different dish or a different pan. But, um, you know, also we um, we did some reading recently, and there actually are people in the scientific community that have tested out the effects of microwaves in that they st- – did a simple test where they put a container of water in the microwave and heated it up. And then later after they let it cool down, they would use it to water their house plants. And they determined that what the microwave does to the water is not healthy. In fact, a lot of the nutrients (laughs) in the water were taken Mm -hmm. out from the microwave. So these house plants that had in, theory been watered actually weren't receiving any nutrients and in days they actually died so what you're saying is that you've done some research microwaves are really as bad as all the health nuts tell us that's the direction we're heading and (laughs) the the um the plus side of that is that um we are as many people are at a shortage for space in our kitchen, that could be mm-hmm. that could be partly because my sister Betty is married to a guy who um, makes dishes, and so um, you know every Christmas <laughs> we get half a new kitchen, and we have to figure out where to put it, and so um, we've decided that not only is the microwave going away, but the space that was used by the microwave is going to be reclaimed in a new cabinet that we're going to make. Well, what about this little machine your, your mother-in-law gave you? It can be conveniently stowed away in our kitchen Island. And then we just have to haul it out and put it on the counter when we use it. And you probably won't use it very often because you didn't use the microwave very often. Is that what you're saying? Oh no, it's successfully taken the place of it over the years. We've used it more and more. In fact, We have the majority of our meals stowed away in the freezer. We'll shop for the whole month and we'll buy things in bulk and we'll bag them up. Like we'll have chicken or we'll have fish or we'll have pork. And those will be in a bag that we'll have dated so we know when it's to be used by. And we just take that out and stick it in this convection oven. And then uh, we can put like a bowl of veggies or something in the bottom and heat it up all at the same time. You do sound like Ron Peel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. But yeah, that sounds like a good... So this is a good thing. Yes. Um, it's it's not bad that your microwave is going away. 
No, I, like I said, I was having a hard time accepting that possibility. But now that Billy has shown me some ideas for that space, um, he's going to design something inspired by the old-fashioned Hoosier cabinets that the pioneers had in their cupboards in the kitchen. You know, this, I'm, the, I'm not sure I know what that is. If, if, if one were to Google an image search for Hoosier cabinet, H-O-O-S-I-E-R, you'd find okay. a lot of these cupboards where people would put their staples like their their flour and their sugar and their coffee and okay. a lot of people's in this generation their great grandparents might have had something like this in their home it's kind of a carryover from the victorian times but um anyways uh billy is excited because we're going to uh, redesign part of the kitchen so that we can <laughs> yes as as toppy's saying a bread box uh, you said that in the chat room. So yes, I, I kind of see that. But um, if I get close enough to my computer, I can read the. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Paul says that that sounds even more organized than his boyfriend Toby is. Um, yes, it, it does. It's I, I I can't. You're just amazing. Well, I've always known you were organized, but this is beyond the. Pay. I didn't realize you were this organized. <laughs> well. Let's just say that I'm lucky that Billy is anyway. And um, I, the only thing besides the microwave that I'm going to have difficulty accepting getting rid of is a uh, desk space that we have. But we're going to reconfigure that. So we'll still have part of that. You're going to give up your desk space in your kitchen? No, we're not giving you need it up. need that for planning meals and, well, it, and it, such. It, it will still be there, but it's going to be a combination space. So. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, it, it may not be as deep a counter, but it will still be there. And then, you know, we're going to have uh, storage for dishes and for cookbooks. Ideally, the uh, the the desk in the kitchen's going to be a space for like um, this cookbook that I gave my mom that I I signed it before I gave it to her. I reclaimed that after she passed, and it's sitting on our kitchen counter in memory of her. And then we're going to also mm -hmm. put some other family photos on that kitchen counter that's the desk, really. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it, it, this Shai Yeti just made a very interesting remark about his job at his, in his household. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you say that he, his job is to look pretty and, and uh, make podcasts? Yes. <laughs> and that, I think, I, that should be my job, too, but that's not. I end up with uh, dishwashing duty and some other things that, since we live in a very old building, we don't have such conveniences as dishwashers. And well, and that's something you're supposed to be uh, vacationing from right now anyway. <laughs> it's, well, I can't wash dishes right now. <laughs> the doctor said I couldn't. He didn't want me putting my purple cast in water. Mm -hmm. So we are just about up at our first yeah so if that was is that your good and your bad um, events for uh, yeah i think the bad is me having to give up the microwave but the good is that it's going to be repurposed and it will be a a nice creative space and and you'll get even more cabinet space in your kitchen yeah we're gonna somehow figure Which people can always use certainly and um Yes, uh, Toppy, the Duchess had surgery recently, which she'll be getting to in just a moment here. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, this is a behind-the-scenes moment, but I've built in some alerts so that we know to move things along, and we're just about up on one of those. So here it comes. This is, this is never going to happen again. You know that. <laughs> Isn't that sad? <laughs> It sounds very sad. It's that's our wolf, right? Yeah. So, wolf. Uh, Sue, what about your week? Well, I had a an interesting week. I started the week by having the cast on my left hand replaced because the first one they put on a week before that was so loose that I could have pulled it off. And since there is still an arm in my, or an arm, a pen in my thumb that goes through my hand holding it, the bones together that they cut up, 
because I had surgery. I have arthritis in my left hand really bad and they stuff off of it. And now it's healing. I mean, it would take about three months from beginning to end. And I had a week and a half about with just bandages on it. And now, and I'm supposed to have three weeks with the cast on it, but the first week the cast got kind of loose. So they had to take it off and put it again. And then we put it back on or put a new one on and it's shorter. The first one came up almost to my elbow. Mm -hmm. This one comes just to the middle of my arm. So I am not allowed to, to wash dishes and now, do any any good things like that. I have to to get other people to do it, which is not when I told that I couldn't wash dishes for three weeks. He went out and bought paper plates and plastic silverware, mm -hmm. uh, so that he wouldn't have to wash. <laughs> yes, we, we wash dishes. <laughs> We, we talked about that briefly in the last episode that you were uh, yes, going to be that living the, in a... that the, the Duke was supposed to be doing the, the dishes and, and, um, and such things. And he just is not real good at that. He... Now, Toppy asked, because you mentioned in the last episode that that cast was purple. Is the replacement also? Yes, it is. I, I, I decided that it wouldn't, I, I wouldn't change the color because I wasn't sure what, since you had suggested that purple has a couple of really cool meanings to it mm -hmm. and or symbolizes a couple of really good things that I thought I'd just stick with that. Now, um, how long have you had the new one? Uh, just uh, since Monday. Okay. Now, which is a week, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I, it's about another week and a half that, and they will, they will take this off. So, uh, and then I get a brace and I get to do a month and a half for something of physical therapy. Oh, and you, so, you get to learn how to play the violin all over again. It's true. I, I think so, since I use my left hand a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess you do actually play the violin, don't you? <laughs> yeah, because that's the, that's the, you, you the, that's the hand you used to frets with. Mm -hmm. But that was um, that was the start of the week. I, I My hand still hurts. Of all the surgeries I've had, this has been the most painful. And since I've had both of my knees replaced and both of my shoulders replaced, I think that's pretty amazing. That's something that is really tiny because it's, it, it, the, the cut on my hand is only like a half an inch, maybe an inch wide. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it's just hardly there. And except that they put these two big pins in it and I will be posting pictures on <laughs> Facebook. I just haven't gotten around to it yet <laughs> because I'm having some technical difficulties with my phone. It doesn't want to let go of the pictures. Uh, well, you it know. doesn't want to, well, my husband um, took them for me and then mailed them to me and it won't, and I am having difficulties saving them off out of the mail. Well, it's, it's a one into my pictures. So I don't, I don't quite understand. And it, there's a problem with the phone. So now. Well, it's a wonder you still have your phone at all. Cause most people in public office get those things taken away. <laughs> Well, it's true, but, but you know, I, I am I am as special as Barack, and apparently as the Donald. Oh, because he is still tweeting. Now I suppose he could be tweeting from a computer, but mm -hmm. I somehow doubt it. Now we were going to go. I think we were going to go into that in a little bit here. Yes. You still have some time to talk about your week. Yes. Or well, anyway, and the other thing, the really good thing that happened this week is my oldest granddaughter and I went to the movies and, Thursday. And what did you see? We saw Sing, and we, and then we 
goofed around downtown for a couple hours, and then we went to see Hidden Numbers. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think I know what either of those about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm not sure. This thing is a cartoon thing, and uh-huh. I'm not sure. It was funny, uh, and I'm not sure what it was about either. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think I know about uh, Sing. I think that that was supposed to be made by the same people that did the Minions movies. Yes, I that I could see I could see that, uh, and I can't I for some reason I can't remember very much about it, but it was funny and I enjoyed it and it's one of those things that when my granddaughters watch it over and over and over again when I'm at their house I it won't make me mad because mm-hmm. there are some movies that they watch over and over and over again at their house that I just want to. to leave and never go back now this is going to date me a little bit but i was an uncle at an early age i became an uncle at about 11 and so uh-huh. so one of the things that i can remember from being the free babysitter was having to see the lion king one too many times <laughs> i can I can imagine that, although I've never seen The Lion King. Oh. That is what I, I don't get to see all the movies, but occasionally I see movies, and, and when I see the movies, I see them many, many times. Now, top As of- they have gotten older, they're a little less. They don't do that quite so much. Mm-hmm. But even as we approach, well, uh, Cleo is, um, is 21 now. And her little sister is only eighteen months younger, so so they've grown up quite a bit, and and I guess they're a little less prone to watch movies quite as often as they did, mm-hmm. but they still watch them frequently enough to get to get uh, to get you really sick of them after a while. <laughs> no, Toppy. But, Toppy in the chat room said that uh, it was a two movie afternoon. Now. I I, um, I I can't remember the last time I saw two movies in a row, but I'm pretty sure that I was falling asleep during the second movie. <laughs> well, we did not, A, we did not see them in the after, or both in the afternoon. We saw the first one. We saw Sing at nine o'clock in the morning. Okay. Because the the particular theater we went to has early showings a couple of days a week for the college students because they're close by the university. Mm -hmm. And then we saw the other movie at like one 30 in the afternoon. So there was time for lunch. Because you said that you goofed around. The original schedule was not to see both movies that day. Oh. Because she was supposed to go to class, but she decided to not go to class. Oh, no, this is... Because they had, she only has classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, mm-hmm. and they had canceled two of her classes, so she thought she'd cancel the third one. And since I was not really good at attending classes when I was at university, I, I there's nothing I can really say about it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Duchess leading by example. <laughs> yeah, well, I have tried to not to encourage them too much to do things that I did. Although the the youngest granddaughter has dropped out of university for a while mm-hmm. and the she did a year and then dropped out, which I also did. I went back in a year and a half and then just kept going to school for 20 years. But <laughs> <laughs> whereas I whereas I just majored in staying away from home. Yes, well, and uh and the oldest granddaughter has had three different majors, or maybe four. I, mean, I, I can't quite. Re- but she started out as an engineering major, and now she's an English major. So, um, I'm not sure what that says. I, I was an English major too, only by fact that if I got really bored with stuff, or I was having problems with some of my classes. Uh, or I didn't want to take the the classes you were supposed to take to actually get the degree. I would taking I would sign up for English classes, so I was a full time student, even though I wasn't taking classes to graduate. Mm-hmm. They, I think they don't allow that so much anymore. But 
but this was in the early 70s, and they let us do a lot of things then. I just remember that, um, of course, I was just independent study at the time, but I remember taking a bunch of intro courses because it was, of course, the beginning of any degree program. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I had to do was take a class on intro to philosophy. And yes. That, you know, I enjoyed the class, but one of the things that they discussed in one of the segments was religion and concepts yes. of religion. And I remember sitting down during the final, or maybe it was just a regular test, but I was so very frustrated when I was writing out my essay for this particular test that I ended up just writing out a couple sentences basically saying, it doesn't matter what I'm writing here because you're going to believe what you want to anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, and what kind of grade did you get on? Well, I'm not sure if I passed that class or not. Ah. But <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun class, though, nonetheless. Um, I took an intro to philosophy class as well, but um, the intro to philosophy class I took was a logic class, mm -hmm. which is more math than it is uh, it, it, than it is what most of us would think of it as, as philosophy. Uh, we did truth tables and and dissected sentences in ways that no English teacher would write recognize and no one else would either they um they were ways of of telling whether arguments when someone is making an argument whether that is true or not and i still have no idea if that proved anything it was kind of interesting to do but I, I don't know what difference it made to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it was sort of a worthless class, but I got an A out of it. So, you know, and I took it the first summer I was there and it did not count as a math class, which is what I was hoping mm -hmm. because you had to get into the second and third year philosophy classes for it to count as math classes. Ah, so in the chat room, Toppy and the Shy Yeti are having a little uh, off side uh, nerd conversation. I don't know if I can follow along, though, because they're talking about the Avengers and a character called Tara King. So, of course, if Billy were here, he might know more about this because comics are more his realm. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know Tara King. Yeah. But I know who Emma Peel is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was talking about uh, the Avengers girl. So there was a, a woman in the Avengers in the 60s. And... Oh, Tara King was the actress. Okay. Is that right? I think so. Guys? There's a seven-second delay, so there'll be a moment. Okay, delay. well, they all... So it sounds like the, the uh, of course, the low point of your week I was... I think that having... Tara King may have been one of the actresses. Yeah. So it sounds like the low point of your week was having to get your cast redone, and the high point was spending time with your granddaughter. Yes. But I should mention that the other movie we saw, mm -hmm. which was Hidden Numbers, is the movie about the black women who served at NASA. Oh, oh and, I, and were the original computers? Oh, I really want to see that. I've seen the oh, it's promotions. A one, it for is it. a wonderful movie. It no. is really sad, and I, I was really embarrassed hmm. because, of course, you know how white people behaved at the time, right? And and all the rules that were in place. I mean, there was this. It, which it, we should talk about it once you've seen it. It is, but I I. I cried and I was terribly embarrassed. And that was the same feelings that my granddaughter had. Cleo was just, you know, mm -hmm. it's embarrassing that, that we are related to people who, who did such things. Uh-oh, it's the wolf. <laughs> I was hoping it would be a different sound, but I'll have to change that. It would be a different sound? I well, like the wolf. Well, the wolf is supposed to be at a certain point. But anyways, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm wondering. I, that movie sounds very interesting, and I I have to wonder if it's an independent film though, because it may not be be one of those that has a wide release. I don't know because I uh, I know you were saying before that 
since you're in a college town, sometimes you get more independent films. Well, we do. Um, but then there's also uh, the university, also the, the main university, you know, that we have like uh, we have the, the main state university here, uh -huh. the flagship of the state universities. We have a Wesleyan university here. We have a Seventh-day Adventist university here. We have a Kaplan university here now, <laughs> uh, which is when I was in, when I was at university, Kaplan uh, taught people how to pass like the GRE and 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 and, and the SAT class classes, their tests, you know, the tests you take to go on further in school, whether it be from high school to college or college to, to graduate school, you know, but they just, but Kaplan is, has now gra graduated to, uh, to being a college because apparently they can't make enough money as, uh, as teaching people how to take tests. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't I don't know what that means, but but we have a number of, of colleges, some of them very small, but but uh, the main university, the University of Wesleyan, well, it's kind of smallish, but it only takes up about four or five blocks. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll uh, the main state university takes up half half of the city. <laughs> <laughs> in the ch in the chat room, the Shyetti is saying, "We're thinking that DJ could be the steed of the faraway nearby, and the Duchess could be Emma Peel fighting podcast crime." <laughs> oh, oh, oh! That yes, that's probably true. <laughs> so I, I think it's time to move on to our topics of the week. Oh yes, fighting podcast crime. I'm sure that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Did they tell us whether or not Tara King was the actress? Yeah. No, because Emma Peel was. She was not the actor. She was not Emma. Emma Peel was not played by Tara King. No, Choppy or uh, Paul uh, Shayetti in the chat room says Emma Peel was played by Diana Rigg. And then Tara King was played by Canadian actress Linda Thorson. Okay, yes. Yes, Diana Riggs. She was wonderful. Mm -hmm. so, and he says Dame Diana Riggs, so the lady Diana Rigg. Yes, I'm sure that by now, probably by now, yes, I'm, I'm sure that that's true. Although I think that she may have passed on, but I'm not certain. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's I don't want to kill off any of our actresses sooner than necessary, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's it's time for our topics of the week. Did you want to go first? Um well I could. I, I was going to try and make this short. Okay. Because as you know, when I was at university, I studied politics or political science, I which is a little different than politics, but but um uh, one of the things that people look at the people I know have been going around saying is that Donald Trump is not our president, that he's like a fake president. And this strikes me as the same people like Donald Trump or, or, or the people on the other side saying that Barack Obama wasn't our president. Both men were elected legitimately in the course of how we run elections. And despite the fact that Donald, Donald Trump thinks that he has been robbed of, uh, or that we had a, a, um, a, a, somehow the vote was, was rigged. I, which I don't believe it was. They, no one has ever proved that we've had a lot of voting fraud in the United States, but, but, um, uh, Despite that fact that he believes that he won this, he won this election fair and square, um, or maybe not so fair, but as fair as as elections in the United States can be. And he is our president for at least four years, and so people should stop saying he's not our president. He is our president. Now, if we want to protest him, or we want to write him letters and ask him questions about 
silly things or not so silly things. I have been pounding him for a copy of his his uh, birth certificate. I think if he wanted, if he needed to see Barack so badly, I need to see his. I've never seen Trump's birth certificate, and I think we need to see it to prove that he is eligible to be our president. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, and that's that's basically what I. What I wanted to say is, and the Electoral College, we may not like it, but it is still the law of the land. Mm -hmm. There are ways of getting rid of it, but it will take a constitutional amendment uh, because it's written in the Constitution. The, right. it, it, the Electoral College is set up in the, in the original Constitution. It's not even part of the uh, amendments, although it... Uh, there are some things about that have been amended from time to time, mm -hmm. but if you want to get rid of it, you you need to to get a a constitutional amendment going and get it passed by uh, two thirds of the Senate or by two thirds of the state or maybe both. I can't quite remember how the amendments in the United States work because. My major study of politi political science was not the United States, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I just need to, I, I just feel the need to tell people they need to stop pretending like Donald Trump did not win the election. That's what people did to, to Obama, and we thought that was unfair and not nice. Right. And it's just as unfair when the other side, when it happens to the other side to say that he didn't really win the election. He did, because there are a lot of, of people who aren't so smart out there that are very angry. And people who are kind of, well, not exactly stupid, but who don't understand that electing him is, is, is perhaps one of the more dangerous elections that are people that we have put in the White House. Mm -hmm. Now, before we started the show tonight, uh, the Duchess and I had discussed what she was planning to talk about. And of course the spirit of this is not really to talk about, um, you know, your uh, disappointment maybe with the election, but more along the lines of, of uh, how the process works and where we're at now. Yeah. And, and, and I, go ahead. And I was going to say, I, you know, of course, um, uh, something that Auntie Vera had posted and I shared with you was just a, a matter of fact, some in, mm -hmm. in, interesting history that I believe said that at this point in time in American history, the Electoral College has only been the deciding factor on who won an election for president, I think, on four occasions of course. Well, that's in a sense that's not actually true because oh. because the electoral college votes on every election. If the electoral college is not brought into play, mm -hmm. nobody wins because that's how we elect our presidents. It is not by by uh, a vote of the people. It is by a vote of the electoral college. Well, I think that maybe <laughs> to to more accurately put the point. It's that the Electoral College had a different candidate than the popular vote. So I think that in this case of, of the example that Intivira had posted. Oh, yeah, I, I understand that 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 is what she's, she was trying to, to get across, was that, that uh, the Electoral College had it in... In only four cases in the history of the United States has the Electoral College been been uh, invoked, in, in vo or has has voted for for a, a different person than the majority of the populace voted for. And I think but, I think that that's interesting. Um, you know how infrequent that is, and I'm sure that people who are more qualified than you or I can you know, comment on that. But I think that, that that says something about how it's set up. And certainly some things that we've written into law may have been appropriate. May have been what? I'm sorry. That's okay. The Duchess's uh, servants just ran off with her Porsche again. 
Um, <laughs> but yes, the you know when when things are written into law, they're appropriate for the times they are written. They aren't all always written with the future in mind, and that's why we have amendments. Well, that's that's true, and and uh, you know that the reason that the populace gets to vote for the president is because we have changed the laws. Uh, originally, they, I believe the state senates voted for the president. Hmm. I, I mean, we didn't have a lot of, we didn't have a lot of selection directly by the people. Yeah. Uh, that, that was more at your local levels that, that was directly by the people. And the, uh, I, I do believe that the, the Senate, the, the, the national Senate or the, uh, is the most, is the latest, uh, body to be directly elected by the people. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, and, and that happened some time ago. I, I, but it happened, I believe in the last, in, uh, the 20th century. Yeah. Well, we should move on. Um, or, or it, yeah. So, well, so I was just anyway. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say I that, may have gotten the century wrong on that, but that's go okay. ahead. <laughs> but I was going to say that um, the way I see it right now, and the Duchess and I have talked about this in this spirit before. Um, it, it's a simplistic way to put it, but I guess one way to think about how the election has occurred is that your team can't always win the Super Bowl. Um, and I grew up in the 80s, and certainly then it was different times, and I was too young to be aware of the political climate. But, of course, things happen in cycles, so we can only hope for the best and uh, try to keep an eye out for... Um, I don't want to say hanky panky, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I would I would say that we probably want to keep an eye out for for the people who are. Um, I, I mean, just just keep an eye out for what's going on in politics, both locally and and nationally, mm -hmm. because you can have a comment on it. And believe it or not, writing writing to these people does does get response and sometimes they actually act on things that you write about and that you care about. And as I understand it, um, some of our representatives have actually gotten into the 21st century and are replying to tweets and emails. Uh, well, yes, that's true. And if you want to write to your representatives, you probably want to send them an email. Uh, there's a connection on the on the .gov site because it takes an additional three weeks after a physical letter gets to to the, their office or their the post office that would deliver it to them because all of that mail has to be checked for anthrax and other such dangerous things. Oh yes. And so if you want if you are writing about a timely topic, you really want to write via email. Mm -hmm. I know that it seems kind of informal and like it's not, it, they won't take it seriously, but I think that, um, I think they probably will. It's, it's, you just need to, you just need to do it. And, um, I know that when I, when I was much younger and much more politically active, I wrote to president Reagan that every week, the first week he was in office and I got four responses from him. Mm -hmm. I received a Christmas card on the 10th of January one year. I received two letters from the State Department. I received a letter from some secretary saying, or it was a postcard actually, saying that the president was really pleased to get my letter about something. But she didn't say what it was. Uh, and... And that was just, you know, so I do, I did get responses. Mm -hmm. So, but um, I think we need to be moving on to yeah. what DJ was going to discuss this week. Right. And so, um, for my topic of the week, I have located an article on the New York Post. 
And this is titled, This Movie Theater is a Snack is Snack Shaming Food Smugglers. So <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the article is by Elizabeth Rosner and Natalie O'Neill. And the article states, this guy should go to work for the TSA. A ticket taker at Sinopolis in Chelsea, where a large popcorn costs a wallet shrinking eight twenty five. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> went full prison guard, searching customers' bags with a flashlight to find outside food last Monday. Moviegoers who try to smuggle in snacks are forced to shame eat before they are allowed inside the theater at the multiplex. Uh, a guard busted one woman and banished her to a drab corner seating area to gobble down the forbidden food before a matinee at the West 23rd Street Theater. And I'll just read a little bit more here. The woman who had brought the contraband in a plastic bag was sent to the popcorn purgatory seating area near the condiment bar. The Hunger Games outraged some moviegoers. Sounds like a power trip, said Adam Schiff. 24, a Brooklyn student who saw Rogue One on Friday. Clearly, the owners want to push, punish moviegoers by forcing them to sit in an isolated area. So they go on about the cost of snacks and things at this theater. And that was, of course, their attempt to uh, stop that from happening. You know, Duchess, I'm not sure um, You know what your experience has been with that. I'm sure probably more than myself. But I, I've often thought that somebody would make, to quote Toppy, a kabillion dollars if they would come up with a movie theater that would partner with like a dollar store. So you had <laughs> really cheap snacks and you can buy them by the bucket full. Well, I don't think that's ever going to happen because it is my understanding that they are not making any money or very much money on the sale of tickets mm -hmm. that movie theaters make almost all the profits off of those snacks. Oh, and that if you don't buy their snacks, you're you're you, they can actually lose money on on some movies if people don't buy snacks to go along with them. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if this and, has been your experience, but you know it used to be there was a difference in price between a matinee and a regular evening show, and yeah, any more at least when I go to mine out here in New York. And mind you, I'm not in the city. I'm I'm in Cowtown. Um, the uh, the price of the matinee tickets doesn't seem to be anything less than maybe a couple of bucks fewer than the evening show. Well, it depends. For instance, the 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 Tuesday and Thursday morning and afternoon movies at the particular theater we went to, which is close to the university, mm -hmm. are like five bucks. Okay. I haven't gone to a regular movie for a long time, but I think they, they are, well, I went to, I think the last regular movie I went to, I also went to with my grandchildren and this was a special uh, preview movie. It was before the movie was officially released oh, like a and that cost us $21 each. Oh, well, that was really expensive. It was a really good movie. That was a movie about, the feelings. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the title of it, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of the cartoon movies about about the feelings and and about how your your feelings. There was anger and and love and and um, I don't know guilt and and stuff. I it was a really cute movie. Mm -hmm. it, I I'm thinking it was Disney, but I think all cartoon movies are Disney, and that's not right. I have no idea who made that, but it was a really, it, it struck me. I, I was so excited about it when I heard about it because the idea of little emotions being in your head or, or somewhere in your body running, you know, pulling these levers and making you feel these things mm -hmm. and uh, just struck me as, uh, as really, I, I don't know, as really on point. I think that's because when I was like in the second or third grade, they showed us this little film clip that showed the how the body works 
with they had these little little guys dressed in like uh, overalls the 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 jeans with the straps over the shoulder and the bib right you know and they and they had different colored overalls depending on what they did and they had they had the people who were the blood and they ran around in your body and did stuff and of course they had a white collar person who was there or dressed in white that was the that was the brain and and he had these filing cabinets up there and he would go through those things to find the things that you needed uh, the information that you needed it it, re, it, it, I don't know, and this has stuck with me my entire life. This thing about these little people running around inside your body, making you know your blood flow and and getting oxygen to your lungs and making your brain work and getting information from your brain to your somehow to your mouth when you need to answer teachers' questions and stuff. And, and this just really struck with me, and so stuck with me. And so when they had this movie about the these little characters in your mind or somewhere uh, pulling little levers and running around and doing um, and, and, and running your emotions. It just really struck me as, as, as fairly accurate. I, I loved the movie despite the fact I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> and, uh, well, I was going to say, um, you know, I, I, uh, I guess I miss some of the things that seem to be coming up in theaters in Denver when I lived there. Um, one of the theaters seemed to be serving soft, well, uh, not soft serve, but you know, like scoop ice cream. And then yeah. they also had some coffee beverages, like they would do the iced coffees and then they would do the ones that were like a, a blend with ice cream. And none of, mm. none of my theaters here seem to have that. Um, I don't think that the theaters here have that exactly. Yeah. They have... Now, the, the theater that we went to, which is a downtown theater. and No, we, and, we only have a few minutes, so I was just going to say real quickly, I'm sad that the discount theater in my town uh, is going to be closing soon because that was the oh. only one around. You know, it was for last run movies. You could go for five bucks, and it was just before a movie goes out on DVD. And, yeah. And um, Billy's best friend that we'll call Tommy – he used to go to that with us quite often, and now they're closing. There's nothing around. Um, and then uh, I was just going to say, we only have five minutes here. So uh, did you want to share with the uh, the listeners the uh, cute story that you told me about the Jordan Almonds? Oh, <laughs> oh God, this was a long, long time ago. <laughs> Speaking of stories about theaters. This had to have been when I was like, 27 or something mm -hmm. we we and that's like about eight of us went to see this movie and i can tell you what movie it was maybe no, that's uh, yeah i can yeah if you want to know it was it was a a uh, it was sort of a pornographic movie that was shown in a regular theater oh and this was, of course, Linda Lovelace's f famous movie. Oh, Deep Throat? Deep Throat. Okay. <laughs> and so there were about eight of us, and we were friends. And this was a mixture of, of sexes and sexual orientation and what have you. It's just a bunch of us that have been friends forever. And my, my favorite candy in the whole world, I think, is Jordan Almonds. And... Now, for a long time, the only place I ever saw them was at movie theaters. Now, for somebody who might not know what that is, can you describe what a Jordan Almond a is? Jordan Almond is, of course, it starts with an almond. It is covered in chocolate, and then it is covered in a hard candy shell, sort of like an M&M, except that, or an M&M with peanuts, only this is a... a with almonds. And I think that these have become popular at weddings in recent years, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, it could be, I don't know, but they but they are a lot larger than say M&Ms with with peanuts. They mm -hmm. Cuz they can be like an inch and a half, 2 inches long, I'd say. Yeah, and you were at the theater with your friends yes. about to see this. So I was at the theater with with my friends and there were not very many people in this theater besides us. And this was a theater that had been built for as as sort of the, that that um, 
those second run movies uh, or the, the, the um, not the first class, uh, you know, the, it, it, these were written for, or it, they were made for B movies and, and such. Okay. So if they, if they were going to show deep throat in a main, in a main frame, in a main theater, it would be these th- particular theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we're there and I have this box of Jordan almonds and I don't remember if it was at the end of the movie when just before we all left or if it was at the beginning of the movie, but at some point when it was like silent, there was nothing going on. There was nothing on screen. Nobody was talking. Nobody, the people who were just sitting there, I dropped the box of almonds and it was full beginning in the movie. And so you could, yeah, it was because you could hear these, these Jordan almonds r- running down the, the floor because they had no carpeting. This, these were linoleum floors and it was built in a slant as most movie theaters are. So the floors were slanted and throughout the movie, every once in a while you'd hear one of these Jordan almonds shake loose from where it had caught on a chair or something. And, and rumble down, down the theater floor. <laughs> it was, it was really kind of funny. And <laughs> well, quite weird. I think at one point when you told me the story, it's that you thought it sounded like people stepping on cockroaches. <laughs> well, yes, I, I think it may have. It, it, it was a very odd noise. And, and since the people I was with knew what it was, but the people who worked there and the other people who, who attended had no idea why this why these noises kept kept happening. I just I, and I just that you know is, and and, and that, socks who was sitting next to me he says just don't say anything nobody will know. <laughs> and that is our time for this episode. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Far Away Nearby. Visit our webpage at tfnpodcast.com. Find our fan page on Facebook and our companion blog on Tumblr. This show is available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher Radio. Email us at tfnpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at tfndj. And call or text us at 720-230-6919. This show is a member of the Pride 48 Network. Find other shows at pride48.com.